seek Imperial favor. Years ago, my people were all but destroyed. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Happy May the 4th, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about Tales of the Empire. Basically, last year was Tales of the Jedi. And this year, they basically introduced Tales of the Empire for pretty much for a season two of, let's just say, called Tales. So this time, basically, last year, it was Ahsoka and Count Dooku and basically the rise and, the rise and fall of Dooku, while it's basically the evolution of Ahsoka through all the movies. Or sorry, through all the, for the missing parts of kind of like three and four and stuff. So basically, let's get right into it, okay? Episode one, The Path of Fear. Uh, it's basically just about young Morgan losing everything to the Separatists when Grievous and the Separatists attacked Dathomir, basically wiped out all the Night Sisters. Morgan was basically left estranged, and basically she was adopted kind of by a northern tribe of Night Sisters, I believe. Second part is basically her trying to find weapons to prevent any further massacre of her people or the northern tribe of her uh, people on Dathomir. And Everybody pretty much in the rest of the episode is just worried about just trying to stay low and trying to stay away from the Separatists. All in all, this episode is uh, quite good. I quite enjoyed it. I love seeing how Morgan, young and afraid, basically seeing her mom get wiped out by Grievous right in front in a very cheap way, of course, by Grievous. But very, the very similarities between um, Morgan and Kanan really do show in this episode, where Morgan, sorry, Kanan, Kanan's master, Depavalaba, was massacred by the clones in front, and the last words by uh, her was run to Kanan. While in this very situation is actually very similar, where the last words mother, her, uh, Morgan's mother says to her is basically run and basically basically run away from these droids and so then that picks up uh quite good and what i also quite enjoyed about this episode is seeing that the night sisters dark magic and stuff isn't oh isn't just the only things that are in dathomir i what i've noticed is on the second part of the episode when M morgan is basically kind of like not I wouldn't say adopted, but more like treated for and like welcomed to. It's the new village, basically north of where the, the Dathomirians live. It's basically kind of like the polar opposites of the Night Sister, where the Night Sisters were more on the dark magic side. These sisters, I would say Night Sisters, I would say actually probably they're probably called Day Sisters or something like that. Because it, it does experience like they are witches as well. But I think they're more on the light side of the for, or kind of magic witch side of the uh, stuff. So I quite enjoyed the polar opposites. How uh, Dathomir is not just a dark place; it's also very like you can see the light in some of these aspects. And then eventually, Morgan wants to seek revenge of what she wants to do and tries to hunt down and kill the droids. However, it goes horribly wrong, and basically she gets a lot of the young girls that are part of the village then if she's a part of to die including one of the not not die but more like brutally injured i'm pretty sure one died but then the headmistress of the the new i'll, I'll if for this sake i'll call them the light sisters or the day sisters basically she comes in she saves everybody and you can see you can definitely see how powerful like even these women are they don't go out of their way to fight like the night sisters do but they definitely take a step back. They kind of want to be peaceful and not mess with the balance, but they have the ability to. I quite, and basically, to wrap it up, basically for this episode, I quite enjoyed all of it. I love seeing the comparisons between how Kanan and Morgan have very similar kind of aspects of their life. I love seeing the differences between the Night Sisters and the Day Sisters. I know it's not confirmed, but bear with me. I love seeing how Morgan is basically throughout her life has basically been a catalyst of destruction and everywhere she goes, she brings basically anger and hate and fear. <laughs> basically the attendance that Yoda says stay away from. <laughs> you can really, you can really tell how Dave organized this where she was very fearful and basically just 
fell to the to the dark side kind of of being an individual like a human so i quite enjoyed this episode i give this episode probably a nine out of ten uh, i quite enjoyed it there's definitely a lot more f- looking forward to there's actually a very strong start also to the series episode two the path of anger i would say is quite good of an episode i would say this is one of the stronger ones also in this season um Basically, the way it goes, Morgan is pitching her ideas for the TIE Defender towards the Empire. The Empire doesn't... Re- certain at individuals within the Empire who was part of that pitch meeting didn't really like it. They were actually in thinking of taking the designs and the raw materials of Corvus, where uh, Morgan is currently r- ruling over. However, at, also at the meeting, you have a mysterious figure who basically approaches Morgan and be like, well, what do you want? Do you want to join the Empire or what for? And basically, it's all a test to see uh, if Morgan should uh, join them, basically, for this mysterious aspect of the Empire. So basically, later on, blah, 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 uh, Morgan is confronted by Rourke. Not to spoil anybody, but if you haven't seen Rebels, we all know who Rourke works for. But by the time, uh, Morgan has a very... Um, I would say probably the best fight scene in all of this, uh, like six episodes, just her versus Rourke in a hand, like a spear to sword combat situation. And what can I, I, I would say this is probably my favorite fight scene in all of the Tales of the Empire so far. It was absolutely amazing. I cannot say enough how when, <laughs> once you get your like biases out of all of it i would say this is one of the best hand-to-hand combat fights or like sword spear hand like sword combat fights in the whole um of star wars i would say because it was quite good uh then eventually thrown out of the background basically says yeah you can join me on one behalf you're not here for the opportunity you're here for the actual like the actual fortification of the empire and make it the greatest force in the world or the universe. I quite enjoy this. I love how in the background Thrawn's like just the saving her, his plans, basically adopting and picking up who he wants to be part of his inner circle. And you can really tell even off the bat, Thrawn knew right away that Morgan was part of the night sisters and there was no evidence at all. As far as I know about it. So overall, I would say I would give this episode a 8.5 out of 10. It is quite good. I would say I there's not a really a lot of negatives towards this particular episode, I would say. It's just, I probably enjoy The Path of Fear a lot more. That's that's me, personally. So right now, I would go with The Path of Fear, then The Path of Anger for one, basically 1-2. One, and yeah, that's my ranking so far. So episode 3, The Path of Hate. I would say this is probably the one of the weaker episodes of the whole series. Honestly, it's not my personal favorite. However, there were some great moments in it, and the ruthlessness of Morgan is actually on very full display on this episode, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, basically, it takes place after episode six, when basically the New Republic's in charge. However, the New Republic comes and wants Morgan to stand trial for her crimes during the Empire. However, Morgan says... I'm not feeling it, Mr. Krabs, and kills basically all the <laughs> members of the New Republic. And basically, at the last moment, Morgan, basi- or the New Republic officers call for help. You can hear Bo Katan on the uh, comms. However, before anybody can respond, Morgan destroys it and says, Nobody's coming. There's basically no hope with a fiery menace in the background. And basically, Morgan really like rounds out her character right here. This is basically the pre setup of why why all the trees and the forest the station sorry the forest the station within uh the like the environment around the city, and I quite enjoyed it. So you can really see the lead up to um, the Mandalorian season two of what everybody wants to do, and you can kind of you can really see the aspects of the pretense of why Morgan works for Thrawn is because she saw a vision and it's basically if if I remember this correctly I'm pretty sure the vision is basically the night sisters that Thrawn are working with in the other galaxy are contacting Morgan 
and saying, yo, help me out here. Get, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> basically, that it. And so out of all of them, basically, that's basically the whole summary. It's basically the officers just walking up to uh, Morgan and Morgan's like saying no. And then Morgan just kills them all. And that's basically the episode. But all in all, I would say this is probably the weakest one out of the all of them so far. However, the ruthlessness of Morgan is so good. It's so nice. I, I, I would say it's quite nice. And even though it's not my favorite, it's still a solid 7 out of 10. So episode 4 is very quite simple. After the events of Order 66, I mean, uh, it did seem like that night of Order 66 during the rain on a Coruscant. Uh, how do I describe it? Uh, Barris is basically recruited by the first sister of the Inquisitors. And basically, she's brought into a training montage where she confronts the Grand Inquisitor. The Grand Inquisitor is saying, stop fighting like a Jedi. Fight with your inner strength in you. Basically, forget, let go of all the teachings the Jedi teaches you and focus on your inner strength. And basically what happens eventually... Barris is pushed off to the edge. She force pushes the Grand Inquisitor. He quite likes it. He smirks. And yeah, she moves on to the next test. Next is basically the Star Wars version of the Joker scene with the Q or the uh the, the pool Q. So basically what happens is the Grand Inquisitor was these two or Barris and this other individual, I believe an ex-Jedi who's willing to join them. Basically, just throw the lightsaber in the middle and be like, fend for yourselves. We only have one spot. Kill the other. So I quite enjoy that. It, the similarities between the Joker, or sorry, the Dark Knight, was quite funny right there in the situation. It made me chuckle a little bit. And obviously, at the end, Barris wins. And so now she is... I, I, it's not confirmed, but I'm pretty sure she would be considered the second sister in this situation. Because the first sister is the one who recruited her while i believe now in this case the second sister is actually barris so all in all for this episode um i love how barris in the intro of this episode you can see that she feels order 66 and all the death and all the crying i love the way that the first sister walks in and recruits her like I would say this is easily the best episode of them all. The badassness of the Grand Inquisitor and the First Sister really ties into all of it. And the ending, I won't spoil the ending, but you can really tell that when Barris is joining the Inquisitors, this individual, I personally got the sense of this individual was not too happy that Barris is still alive. However, my only question about this episode is actually this quite this specific episode is if Barris wasn't going to be killed because she's not considered a Jedi in this episode why the hell was Ahsoka then targeted at the end of <coughs> the Clone Wars it makes no sense to me personally why the clones would turn on Ahsoka but not Barris like Barris was once a Jedi I know she's not considered a Jedi anymore but Ahsoka's not a Jedi either. So, like, wouldn't that, like, that plot hole makes no sense. Unless the, the clones were on strict orders not to kill Barriss until the Inquisitors got there. And it kind of makes more sense where uh, maybe Barriss was originally designated for Order 66. However, because, uh, for whatever reason, maybe the Grand Inquisitors, or the Grand Inquisitor, or the Inquisitors, or someone in the Empire was like, well, hold off this person betrayed the jedi maybe we can use them so maybe mentally that makes more sense but all in all i still give this episode a 10 out of 10 maybe that plot hole maybe in my head hasn't fully circulated or yet maybe maybe we'll get more answers later on but honestly a 10 out of 10 episode this is probably my favorite one out of the bunch so for me right now it goes four one two three honestly currently right now so episode five realization it's basically Barris and the first sister go off and they're instructed to kill this Jedi that's rumored to be in this uh on this planet and pretty much attached to the city. It's kind of very similar to the introduction of Kenobi. However, um episode um 
sorry, episode four, basically, or sorry, episode five takes place on a different, obviously a different planet. And you can really tell the ruthlessness of some of these inquisitors because of the, the destruction that the first sister caused at this like little marketplace. And while a kid told, tells uh, Barris where the um, Jedi is located, the, the market is basically then pretty much <laughs> all the people in the market is basically killed and wiped down by the first inquisitor, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, not going to lie. I don't think that there's much <laughs> to complain about that. Honestly, what a, it was a pretty great sequence. Uh, basically then later on, this is where my disappointment in the episode, and it's mostly because of me. And at the back of my head, I was like, please, please, please. Like, I saw, I saw the title of episode five. I was like, please, this is where Barris fights Luminara. This would be a, a, an amazing arc where the realization that, well, the Inquisitors are not the good guys. We should be protecting life and stuff. Like what we're what we're supposed to, and I was really hoping like Barris was going to kill or like not kill, but more like have to confront Luminara because we know from Star Wars Rebels that the body of Luminara is actually being held by um by the Inquisitors and uses it as a lure to attract other Jedi. However, we don't know how the body was came in place. We don't know how Luminara actually died. All we know is at one point. The Lum Luminara dies to the hands of the Inquisitors, or maybe Darth Vader, and the body is basically gets is just held onto by them. So, to my disappointment, the rain the Barish just fights a random Jedi, and honestly, the sequence is quite good. Like this whole episode is quite good on itself. The problem is, I think I just got into my mind of, I wish it was. Luminara that Barris is fighting. However, it's not. So I think that kind of took me out of the episode. Because I think I think you gotta explore it a bit more, a lot better for the storytelling reasons. Kind of very similar to the opposite of Anakin and Obi-Wan, where Anakin was willing to uh pretty much sacrifice his relationships to protect the ones he loved. However, you can see the mere comparison of maybe Barris and Anakin, where Barris was willing to join the Empire and willing to do all these atrocities. However, when he, when she is confronted by one of her mentors, she's unwilling to go with it any further because she feels like she she doesn't have to str she she can't do it. She doesn't want to betray one of the people she kind of like loves, her master. However, that's honestly that's okay for storytelling reason why maybe that doesn't happen but in my head i kind of got disappointed by that however all in all this was a pretty still a good episode i sh i'm sure if i watch it over again i give i would give this an 8.5 out of 10 maybe an 8 but at the current moment i give this episode a 7.5 out of 10 i i think i think the problem is i i was I think I was just all in my head on this episode, to be honest. Episode six, I want to say right now, is probably the most controversial episode out of the six. Not on the basis because of the quality of it. The quality is quite good. The problem is the ending is quite confusing, maybe for some people, and why? So basically, the episode goes like this. Barris has basically turned her back to the Inquisitors and basically has... Pretty much reconciled with Ahsoka. A little teaser, I believe, uh, throughout the episode. However, uh, so basically, she now basically is, becomes a healer of sorts. And you can really tell the toll that th not just this planet, but the stress of running away from the Empire is taking on her. So basically, a parent and her a mother and a father is basically taking their child to understand why the Empire wants to take their child away from them. Well, it turns out this child is Force-sensitive. Force-sensitive children is always a very interesting topic, honestly, in the Star Wars community, mostly because who the hell hires child soldiers, <laughs> basically. And so it got to a certain point where they can feel that the dark side of the Force is coming to present, 
I'm not going to lie. I kind of thought it was Vader coming to destroy Barriss. It's the first sister, unfortunately. And I understand why it's the first sister, but I was I was hoping if this is the episode where Barris gets killed, I was so hoping it was going to be Darth Vader who's coming out of the snow chasing down Barris. Mostly because it's revenge. Kind of like times two. Got my hopes up there. Um, however, then it turns out to be for the first sister. The first sister and Barris kind of have a face-off kind of bit where Barris is kind of stalling the first sister just a bit. And you can tell that Barris has like fully like just come to the realization that the light side is obviously better. Uh, just a heads up. Um, Barris tells pretty much her disciples and the parents to run off and go take the ship and escape. And that leads to basically to the situation of the disciples of Barrosses are taking the mother and the father and the child to um, Ahsoka. It's a little hinted. Uh, I, I think that's what they were going for. I think an old when she said, I'm pretty sure she says old friend. And the only old friend I think of Barris, honestly, is Ahsoka. Obviously, maybe some uh, reconcile happened at some point that we don't know about, which I don't mind it being picked up. Which, crossing fingers, I hope so. So I was quite intrigued by that. Um, so basically, Barris stalls the first sister, and eventually the first the first sister gets f- fed up and just like, I have a mission to do. I want to track down this child. So basically, then this is where the con. I think the controversy happens for this episode. The controversial part of this episode is the first sister, the parents of the child. And the two disciples of Barris go into an ice cavern or an ice cave. And the way it was shot and the way the even the music worked, it kind of sounded like this was a force sensitive ice cave. That's what I got the feeling from. Kind of like the uh, Dagobah cave. But it was more of a reactionary where the Dagobah cave is more like a dark side temptation kind of cave. Or this is pretty much the opposite, where it's a light side version of the cave. Where if you're too willing to go with the dark side, you might be lost forever. While the darks or the light side people can easily navigate through. That's what I got the vibe from. Uh, However, in the situation where the parents and the two disciples of uh, Barris escape, the real controversy is... The first sister is basically lost and can't get out. And Barris is trying to help her, pretty much reaching out, saying, you can forget the Inquisitor ways. It's like a metaphor for um, leave the Inquisitor, leave the Inquisition, leave them, join me. It's going to be okay. And the first sister is like slashing her lightsaber because she's frustrated. She wants to leave. She just she knows she uh, she failed her mission and she just now wants to get out of here because all the constant warnings bear saying you won't be able to leave unless you let go. And obviously letting go, it means the Inquisition ways. So eventually, out of the blue, out of pure frustration, she slashes, slashes while hearing Barris's voice. She then randomly thrusts her lightsaber because she's expecting a nice while there actually Barris to be there she accidentally stabs Barris, and then she's like oh no like what the fuck like i uh, i did something wrong or i did i didn't mean to kill you i'm so sorry now this is where the controversy i think this is where the controversy happens because it makes sense kind of out of your frustration why it happens or why it ended like that the problem is I don't think that was actually Barris in the cave. Now, this might be a theory. This is a Star Wars theory. Or this is my cave theory. Where Luke saw visions of Vader within the Dagobah cave. I think this was a vision from the light side cave. For a like, kind of like... I don't know. Like, I, I took it as Barris didn't actually get stabbed. It was more like a... Kind of a mental like vision that the the ice cave was given her kind of like the dark when Darth Vader didn't actually show up in the Dagobah cave. It was actually just a vision. That's what I get the vibe from, from this ice cave kind of where it wasn't actually bears. who got stabbed. It was more the, um, 
like kind of like a manifestation that the cave brought to the first sister. That's what I got. That's I, I think that's what happened. But I, I'm sure that honestly, it was actually Barris who got stabbed. And if it turned out it was just Barris who got stabbed, I would be so disappointed, honestly. But I think I, I would change my opinion on the situation where it turns out the cave was actually like a force sensitive cage or a cave and that and it caused a force vision of Barris there. Now, that would be that would be an interesting twist. I don't know if that's true or not, but that could change the whole episode to, for me to a certain degree. So all in all, the episode itself is actually quite good. Honestly, the first the first half is quite good. It's understandable. It makes sense. She lost her. Basically, it's a cycle of she lost her way. She joined a bad. She joined the Inquisitors, the bad or the dark side. She realized that this was a mistake. She left and then she find her way to. Come full circle. Now, her mission was to bring out her friend who that she like bonded with during uh basically she bonded with and so she wants to pull pull her out and basically yeah that i don't know how to describe this and it's basically just this whole episode i'm pretty sure the second half is for barris wants to help the first sister let go and join her back as the uh a regular member of the force we're kind of like a, at this point, a renegade Jedi. So, all in all, I quite liked the episode. The first half, I quite enjoyed. The second half, I understand if some people are annoyed by it. I kind of see both sides to it. I understand what he, George Filoni was going for. I just think, I think, even if he retcons, that it's a, I don't know. If he retcons if it's a ice cave, forward sensitive ice cave, ice cave, and it turned out it wasn't actually Barris in the cave, it was actually a, like a force vision. I think that would be pretty sick and pretty cool. So I give this episode a on itself a seven out of ten. I would say, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say a seven out of ten. So for me, I would say the ranking goes like this. Three is the weakest one. Then it would go six. Then it would go five. Then it would go two. Then it go one. And then it'll be four. Yeah, I would say that. I would say that's pretty good. Devoted by far is probably the best episode. I probably enjoyed Path of Fear a bit more than others, probably. But that's just me. But definitely the best fight scene of all of them come from the path of anger between Rourke and Morgan, hands down. So all in all, I would say this is a solid 8 out of 10 series so far. Uh, quite good, honestly. There's nothing really negative, I would say, about this series. Maybe you can say there's some questionable choices in characters, maybe. Or, me yeah. But, like, other than that, I quite enjoyed the episodes. Um, I would say this is a quite 8 out of 10 short stories. And I'm quite interested in seeing more tales because I love these short form contents. Thank you so much for everybody who came up to watch my review of Tales of the Empire. If you like this series, hit that like and subscribe down below. I, I'm basically, it's just my channel is basically anything that I find interesting, I'm going to review or play. And I quite enjoy this. I'm at the 50 subscribers right now, and I've only been doing this for two months or three months now. And honestly, I'm quite enjoying it. So thank you for everybody who came out to watch. Hit that like and subscribe down below. And hopefully I see you next time on my review, guys. So peace out, everybody.